Hello everyone, it's Niven, and welcome to episode 8 of Behind the Scenes of Development. This was a weekly series I did on my games, and I showcased behind the scenes of development, how the games were made, how I used my assets, where did I download those assets, and how everything worked in CopperCube 6 and other engines which I have used. Now, until now I haven't had any new games, so basically now I have 4 new games and I can showcase 4 more episodes every week. So today we have a special episode and it is about Enclosure, a game which I made a couple of months ago, I think. Yes, it was made on January... No, it was made in 2022. Wow, so this is last year's game. Anyways, Enclosure. Enclosure is one of those spoof, spooky games I made. It is directly inspired by PT, as showcased on the games page. And basically, all you do is you go through a corridor and you get spooked by multiple things. Now, this one actually had a different story, which was unique from PT, but most people, you know, thought it was like PT, so that's that's alright. This was one of those games, by the way, which Markiplier has played, and I could not have been more proud. And after the primary color man, which did not give me the results I wanted to, Enclosure actually is one of the most downloaded and one of the most popular games which I've ever made. So that should tell you something. Now let's go to the behind the scenes. And here is the folder for Enclosure. Some of you know, some of you don't, but I like things organized. I like my game to be in one folder. Everything, the assets, the art style, the graphics, the fonts, everything to be in one folder. And as you can see, there are multiple variations which I've made about the text, about the graphics, and I use them every time and I test them on multiple projects so everything works the way I want it to work. I have all the assets put in the folder which I need like the tunnel, the flashlight, the door, uh, the cloth ghost and things like that so I can use them and they also have their own specific credits so the assets which are downloaded from Sketchfab, they have their own CC credit, so I credit the developers and the people who actually worked on the assets. Here is a Copper Cube file for enclosure. This is a menu, basically it has the room light, the trash bag which was used in the game and it is actually moving as you can see. It has the title card which is enclosure right here, the play button and the exit button. It has also the copyright just in case if someone wants to download and distribute it without my notice. Anyways, here we go up on the right side and we have scenes. Now as you can see there are many scenes in this game. I did mention in one of my behind the scenes of development episodes that Shunned was one of the bigger games I've made because it had many scenes. Enclosure definitely beats that game because this one has tons of scenes. It has multiple rounds, I call them circles, where the player goes around. It has a prologue, it has the bad ending, the good ending, uh, the credits, and things like that. And as you can see, everything is made for just one simple scene. This is the one scene which is made, and as you can see, this is an entire tube. This is just one big hallway. I made this by myself, by the way, with using the asset which was made by a person, by developer, which I've credited in the game. But then I added some multiple things, like for example, this uh, flashing uh, light right here. Uh, this is the actual light. Those are the tubes and, you know, basic stuff, and this is the texture which I used for the game. Uh, there's also the ground, which is separate from uh, the the tube. And uh, this game was in particularly special because I used what's called the spotlight and the static lights. Now, spotlight and static lights are used in Copper Cube to make the game more visually 
outstanding because if I use the lights which are just dynamic you can show I can showcase right here this is what happens it absolutely breaks the immersion and breaks the feel of it being you know an actual game now if you do the statics and if you have it like this then you have to actually bake the lights which means that you have to go right here light mapping and you have to press calculate and it calculates everything as i said the first circle is this and then it's copy pasted and the second one the third one the fourth one the fifth one each and every one of them they're the same they're just multiple variations and to be frank this was one of the easiest games i've made but i had to work a lot on the first circle as you can see this is the ghost it has uh the what's so called proximity thing sphere and once it hits the player so it jumps in the player like this and one once it hits the player right here it has delete a c node and it deletes itself so that's one trick i used on this one uh we also have a secret scene which is the lab and the lab was one of the fun things i had to make i actually used uh, the action which was showcased to me by my friend uh, it's how to make an object look like another object like look like a watery object and uh, as you can see if we take out this glass looking thing we have this tube which is actually like a water bubble so if you go inside the water bubble see this is this is it so this is very helpful if you want to make something which is underwater and you don't want it to be touching the ground. I know I'm saying this very fast and for some of you it's very um, new, but uh, after some time you can figure this out on your own and maybe I might make a Copper Cube 6 tutorial about it. And yeah, this is a different scene. There is also a bad ending where you are trapped in this loop of bags and, you know, there are flies around. And there is also a good ending where you are forced to kill this poor guy. Now, if we press delete, we can um, remove uh, the thing, the globe, which is covering this guy i did that so nobody was able to go next to him and touch him so yeah this one way to escape to kill the guy and by the way here is here is the weapon connected to the player and uh it does its job and uh yeah and here are the credits thanks for playing and uh yeah the prologue this is it just a door like in pt so yeah that's basically it. the short behind the scenes of development of enclosure and that was it for this episode i hope you enjoyed it i hope you learned something new if you have any questions about this project if you have any questions about the specifics of how it was made please feel free to comment down in the comment section and leave a question if you're interested i might help you of course i may not help you because maybe i didn't have enough time i don't know but just feel free to comment down below i will try to help you as much as i can thanks everyone else for watching once again i will be making another episode covering beneath the shadow and the following two episodes will be about child whispers and other side which was not developed by me it was developed by sam ferguson but i hope he gives me the permission to talk about the game and maybe he can explain something to me and i can explain it to you the viewers yeah that was it thanks everyone else for watching once again have a wonderful day See you in the next episode. Goodbye.